pie, pie, yeah, a lot of pie. Hey, in style, I'm Milo Ventimiglia, and you were watching this guy. My birthday is July 8th, 1977. I was born in Anaheim, California, and my current home is Los Angeles. Been drinking matcha for years, hot matcha, plain with honey. I don't know, kind of like sweets, which is trouble. Chocolate, sweet, sugar, cakes, cookies, Danish, donuts, popsicles, pie, pie. Yeah, a lot of pie. With ice cream on top, yeah, I think that's about it. Man, that's the hardest question ever. Because there's too many movies, there's too many great movies. There's the classics, there's Your Godfather's, Goodfellas, Casino, um, but I mean, Armageddon successfully answered that question without really giving an answer. I grew up on a lot of like 70s rock. The Smiths, Led Zeppelin, Stones, Jimi Hendrix, all that. Kind of go back to it a lot. Then you could even like throw like Tahitian drums in there. Kind of rad beats. <laughs> Sesame bagel scooped with cream cheese and either tomato or cucumber, but then the best you got to put salt on top of it, but like a seasoned salt. Self-love I think is one, respecting yourself, forgiving yourself, finding those things that, that make you a better person, and then hopefully that positivity can kind of spread to, to those that you're around and those that you care about, and then they can spread that on and, and, and move it forward. Um, I think self-care is having an awareness when you're struggling, having an awareness just when you need to sometimes ask for what you need. It's drinking water, it's eating the right food, skip the sugars, it's exercising, it's spending time with your loved ones, it's spending time with yourself. You know, I think a lot of people have a hard time spending time with themselves for whatever reason, but I think if people can understand the, you know, their inner strength, their core, their beauty, and hopefully have a good life. I think I have fun with it. Born in July, definitely a cancer. Uh, can get crabby and, you know, organize piles of things around my house. Yeah, I guess you can buy into it as much as you want. I think there's probably some kind of accuracies and a little bit of magic that comes with it. And I think everybody needs a little bit of magic. I got Misty on set last night, but it was for the scene. Cried as a human being. I don't think it happens often, but I don't think I hold back. I think, I think thing, like emotions hit me. Like the older I've gotten, you know, 45, emotions kind of hit you differently. You care about life a little bit more. You care about people a lot more. It depends, but usually I'll turn my alarm off and meditate. Beyond that, toss a robe on, make some warm drink, make some food, clean up, get on the road. Turn the light off before you fall asleep. It's a good habit, good practice. The most memorable moment is the now, because it's happening and you're creating it and you're able to have those open eye visions where you are pulling people in and people are pulling you in and you have shared experiences and, and hopefully you can impact people positively. Playing Jack, oh man, man probably, probably Mandy Moore. TV wife, she's not only a wonderful actor, but I mean, just a human being and like, She's my friend, I miss my friend. I think that's probably the thing that I miss the most because we're at Paramount, which is where we filmed This Is Us for the new show, and I brought the whole crew. So I've got the whole This Is Us crew on the company you keep. So everything's the same except for the writing and the acting. Otherwise, like, we're all doing the same show. So I don't have to miss the crew much. I see them five days a week. I mean, I think playing Jess helped me to understand Internet Boyfriend a little bit. I just learned that today while wearing a lovely pink mohair sweater. Ja Jack and Jess are two very different people to me. I never really saw, other than the kind of absence of a father for Jess, a presence of a father, and I know Luke represented that male role model figure who was there to really shepherd Jess out of some troubling times as just a kid who's too smart for his own good. But Jack was more inspired by my own dad. Jack was just very much, hey, let me try and do good for like the good dads out there, the good husbands, and remind everybody that this is a real life attainable superhero. Fundamentally, who Jack was, he was just a good, solid man. Dan and Amy sets are fun. Uh, Amy Sherman Palladino and Dan Palladino, who I did Gilmore Girls with, they're my friends, they're wonderful. 
and they keep having me back. You know, they just have this ability to create these evergreen characters and these evergreen stories. My friend Alari, her daughter's seven, and she's just now starting to watch Gilmore Girls and already said she wants to go to Harvard because of Rory Gilmore. And it's like, that's so cool. I mean, for a show that's more than 20 years old to be picked up by someone as young as seven now, understood, and the kid is inspired by it, that's genius level writing. Mm -hmm. Uh, so on the company keep, I play Charlie Nicoletti. He owns a bar with his family. Uh, he also happens to be a con man. His whole family, family of grifters. And he crosses paths with a woman who he doesn't know much about. Her name is Emma, played by Catherine Hannah Kim. They have a, a long weekend together, all kind of predicated on lies. They don't really tell each other the truth about one another, but instinctively, fundamentally, they know who one another are. They go their separate ways and they uh, intersect professionally. He a criminal and her on the law enforcement side as a CIA officer. So it's kind of like worlds colliding. Yeah, I think I might've been like 14 years old. I think I might've like been kind of like uh, instigated by a buddy of mine that I grew up named Roger. He had a girlfriend and he said to his girlfriend, hey, go kiss Milo. She asked me if I'd ever kissed the girl. I'm like, yeah, of course I've kissed the girl. And she laid a kiss on me. I had never kissed a girl. I think if you're lucky enough to find someone that inspires you to be better, inspires you to work on yourself and focus on being a good representation of who you are in the most whole way, I think that could possibly be the, the right person. There's a couple books that I, I read once a year. The first one is a book called Replay by Ken Grimwood. I'm always shy to talk about it because I hope they never make the movie, although there's a really good script of it right now, but it's just a wonderful book about a man who's living his life over and over and over and over again. And then he sees an advertisement for a movie he's never seen before because, you know, if you live your life over and over and over and over again, you're never introduced to a new movie, a new book, a new story, a new song, anything. And then he sees this movie that he's never seen before and the producer on it, it turns out she is living her life over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. So it's this big, beautiful love story that kind of intersects where lifetime after lifetime, they're together or they're not together. And they're just, it's a very beautiful story of love. I've had a camera in my hand since I was a kid. You know, we go on family vacations. For some reason, I always had the camera and I'd get 30,000 shots of like just random stuff. But then as I got older, I just, I kind of got into it. And cameras for me just, I think if you're really trying to just experience and see the way like life is kind of coming together, you can start to see things lining up. And when you have a camera, you know, these days, you know, I think there's just kind of like shoot, 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 pop, 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 versus something like film and manual focus like Alex was using today. You know, it's like you kind of have to see it all lining up and be ready for it with the alchemy of the film and the shutter speed and the aperture and all that. And then when it all lines up, you grab it. I just love photography. I always shoot. I got gang loads of photos from This Is Us and a lot of other sets that I've been on. I usually find some way to kind of tuck cameras on me or carry cameras and just shoot. But then just like life, you know, getting out and shooting. I've had some of like the best days shooting in New York and the film in my camera didn't even load. But yet it's like going out and like seeing something, seeing like two, two gentlemen on the street looking at a map and like finally know where they're going. They turn and they look and they point and you get the photo and there's nobody behind them on that street. Nobody behind them on that street. And you get back to your hotel and like, I had no fucking film in my camera, but I see the photo. I still see that photo. It's just, it's, it's, there's something about it that like kind of captures life in a different way. And I think moving pictures, movie cameras do the same, but it's, but it's different. I don't know. It's, it's experiencing life. Yeah. That's my photography, I guess. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed getting to know a little bit about me. Um, send any care packages with sweets to Paramount Studios. That was a joke, please don't, but I appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoy. Perfect, wrap. Cool. Thank right, you. Cool. That awesome. Yeah, no problem, guys. Yeah, you. of course, Thank of course. You.